Okay, uh, welcome to another video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill and I am a UK reseller. I buy and sell antiques, collectibles and anything unique and unusual I can and flip it for a profit. Purpose of today's video is a bit of a vlog, some updates and so on. Um, so yeah, I got loads to get through. I got my list to hand. At the end of the video, I'm going to splice in a little bit of footage of the baby because lots of you have been asking how the baby's getting on and for updates on the baby. And I brought her to work with me this week and she was sat in the rocking chair just loving life. So I've done a little few second video for you to actually see her in the rocking chair. Um, I've also been asked uh, a few times uh, because I got a few followers who used to live in Wales. So I've actually done, when we went up to the Brecon Beacons and we went up our national park and all the rest of it. I've done some cameras, camera shots, photographs, so you can actually see the area in which I live. So those of you who know Wales, um, I'm going to show you some beautiful images of the Penavan uh, Mountain, Brecon Beacons, and the Aberdeen Valleys. Really nice. But again, that'll be towards the end of the video. I've just, well, let me start that again. I've constantly asked by everybody how is it i get go to a boot sale and i come home with a car full of really really good gear or i go to a car boot sale and to be honest with you i never really fail and yet they go to car boot sales and all they ever see is clothes and toys and junk so i've done a little bit of a blog on my website of basically little tips and secrets of why I manage to buy things the way I do. So if you want a little bit of tips and advice on being more successful when you go to a car boot sale, then shoot across to my website, antiquesarena.com. Go to the blogs. Uh, my new blog is there, uh, some tips and secrets to help you be more successful when you go to, out buying stock. I want to do an update on the charity shop. Um, those of you who watched the first or the second video of the charity shop, I've had hundreds and hundreds of comments on that. No, they haven't raised their policy. They've still banned all trade. However, at the same time, they are not actually quizzing people they don't know. They've only banned the traders they know. I have many dealers come visit me here at the shop and they don't seem to be having a problem going in there. So it is only the local trade they've banned. So how it's affecting them, I don't know. But I know it has had a knock-on effect. And I'll tell you for why. Is they have been obviously turning people away to the point that people have now started coming to me and saying, I've been clearing my loft. Would you like some antiques? Yes, please. There you go. And they've been giving them to me free of charge. Shocking, I know. I never have free stuff, but um, there we go. Sorry about that. Uh, trying to stop the messages coming through. Um, so that's the charity shop. Uh, you will see I've got three or four videos made to go out over the next few days. Uh, one of them contains the free stuff I was given that probably would have ended up in the charity shop, but they've been turning up too many people away. I don't know how many of you saw my video um, a couple of weeks ago where I was buying stuff from Gary and at Downing Spot Market. Well, in that video, part two, I think it was, I showed you a small bayonet I purchased. I paid £100 for it, which is $140, £145. Um, and I wasn't 100% on it myself. As I said on the day, I'm, I wasn't a military, or I'm not a military dealer, but I'm, I just buy with my gut. And 100 pound on a bayonet was a lot of money. But this was a 1903 pattern short bayonet. I could only find one in the Imperial War Museum. And other than that, there was none for sale. However, I did also state that I was still researching it because I didn't know exactly what I had. And some very kind um, follower of my videos messaged me and said, here is a link to a video 
describing exactly what you have. And he sent me a link and somebody, it wasn't his, but somebody has done a video um, talking about these bayonets, 1903 bayonets. But what I have actually got is a 1903 bayonet that has been converted to a dagger. The Commando Elite and the British SAS, Special Air Services, um, used to take the 1903 bayonet and they would fashion them into a dagger. And there's a full YouTube video. It's only a short video, a few minutes long. I'll splice in a link to it in the description. It's really, really interesting um, talking about these knives and how the Commando Elite and the SAS used to take the bayonets and convert them into daggers to use. Now, from what I read, it is seriously rare to find a 1903 pattern bayonet anyway. Even rarer to find one that's seen service. So to find one that's not only seen service, but has then been converted later on uh, to be used by the commandos or the SAS to a dagger and then seen service on special missions or secret missions makes that bayonet seriously collectible, very rare, and I'm really pleased to own it. It's up on my website now, but uh, absolutely love the thing. But that was very kind. Um, one of these good things that comes out of these videos is I do get help. I don't know everything. Um, as I state in the blog I wrote today, I utilize knowledge and help of other dealers to you know, make sure I score. Um, I've had a little haul. I'm going to show you a little haul that I've had in. Bear with me just a second. Um, I haven't filmed the haul for the plain and simple reason that it's all minus checks. I show you one and you've seen them all. So what I'm going to do is just show you a couple of photographs of them now. If you bear with me a second. So this is the collection of minus checks I purchased. A gentleman come in to me in the week and asked would I be interested in the minus checks. All bar one or two of them are English. Most uh, There's one or two Scottish and the rest are English. The minus checks you want to be buying are the Welsh. Preferably private mines, not NCB, but Welsh. That's where the money is. Um, but there's quite a you know few nice checks. You have this Seafield one here, that's Scottish. Um, so yeah, nice little job lot. So I bought all the miners checks. I bought the Eccles plaque off the miners lamp and a load of Worksman, Workman Club tokens. And I paid £100 sterling or $140 for 20, 21 miners checks and a bunch, probably 10 or 15 Workman's Club um, tokens. What else was it? That was it, yeah. Uh, the gentleman did come back in later, offering me two Lancaster brass checks. Now, they're seriously rare and can pull hundreds of pounds. However, before he even pulled them out of the pocket, he said, I'm unsure of these. Now, knowing that he's a collector, um, I would take his word that if he's dubious that they're fakes, then the likelihood is they were fakes. He obviously... Being a collector, he handled more miners' checks than me. He had more knowledge in the subject than me. Um, and if he was saying to me, I'm unsure of these, these might be fakes, then I had no intention of buying them as anything other than the fake. Um, because quite frankly, if he's saying they're fakes, they're fakes. So I left those. I didn't buy those. But I had all those miners' checks. They owe me about £4 something each, which is absolutely fine because they're going to sell out at a tenner each. No problem whatsoever with that. And it's an easy double my money and make a little bit after that. The reason I'm giving my prices in dollars and sterling now is I am having, I'd say, 50% of my views now are overseas, mainly America, Canada, and Australia. Uh, and I've been asked to give my prices in dollars as well as sterling. That's why I'm doing it. Hopefully, I'm not offending anybody. Um, and if I am, I'm sorry, I'm still going to do it. Um, at the end of the day, 
people I'm people all over the world are watching my channel and I am so grateful and when they ask me to put in the dollars that's why I'm putting them in so it has been requested and that's why I'm doing dollars and sterling now with my prices I'm I want to talk to you about a blog I'm going going to write um, it's a little inspiration I suppose from Nick who's building an app at the moment they're building an app to do jumble trails and car boot sales and things well I thought why not have a page on my website where people can if they go in a travel they can go on the website and just have a look at all the antique shops and things that are in that area so I'm going to write the blog I've already done a blog showing all the different resellers and things so I thought I'd do a blog and let's say for argument's sake you live in Cardiff I list all the antique shops in that area. Um, it's not going to be an app or anything. It's just going to be on the page. You just click on the town you go into. So let's say for argument's sake, you want to go to Cardiff Splot Car Boot Sale. Is there anywhere else I can go after that? You click on it. Oh, look at that. Three more for a flea market is only a mile away. So I'll go to three more for flea market and so on. So I'm going to do a blog on my website just pointing out the antique shops. Um, if you want your antique shop added, then I'll add it because it doesn't matter where in the country you are if you're in the UK and it's no point me adding um, destinations outside the UK but I'll add any destinations in there within the UK and then what they can do they can click on the shortcut to the town or the area they go into and then that will list any antique shops so if anybody wants uh, their antique shop or antique center or anything added just go to the website and contact us and send me your details, just the address and the name of the center or shop, and I will include a postcode, and I will put that in the blog for you. I did mention I was considering doing uh, live auctions on my channel. Uh, the reason I haven't done that was the response was very poor. I had less than half a dozen people actually say, yes, that sounds a good idea, we do it. I put it out there as a bit of a feeler, but it didn't really go very well. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I've had customers come in, and on top of that, my headset died. So I'm now reverting back to microphone and the computer. So it's been one of them days today. Um, I'm trying to lose, or I've lost track of where I was. Um, just talk to you about the blog in the shops don't know if i mentioned talking about the auctions i think i did okay so we're gonna talk about um i was asked or i've been asked now about 10 or 15 times to do a live q a this one does seem popular so i am going to do a live q a and i am going to do a regular However, what you have to realize is um, I have four children at home and a baby. So five children at home with a, a girlfriend who works as a care worker, shifts. So it's very hard for me to actually find the time um, to actually do live videos. When it's pre-recorded, I can film them any time of the day or night and then publish them when I want. I also want to give notice so people can actually attend the lives um, to give their questions, obviously. So it's very hard for me to give a date for a live and stick to it. So I'm going to look into it and see whether or not I can find a universal time that I know I'm pretty safe every week uh, and try and stick to that weekly. But I'm going to do a, a live Q&A regular. And then what you'll have to do, if you want things looked at, you can have to send me those in advance. And then I can include them on the day um, because it's going to need photographs and everything for the videos. Um, and if it's just general questions, then you can ask general questions on the day. So what should we do first? Should we do the landscapes or should we do the baby? Let's do the baby first. Yeah, got to be done, haven't I? Love, love the baby. So it's <laughs> got to be the baby first. So if I screen share here. Morgan, let's see you again. Is 
rocking. Just you again. So that was my beautiful little girl, two years of her age, in work with Daddy, sitting on the Urco mid-century rocking chair. And doesn't she just look amazing? I'm surprised she hasn't stolen it to go home yet. So that's the update of the baby. So I'm now going to show you a little bit of the landscape in the local area because I have said that I would show people, you know, the landscape for the area. And, you know, I like to try and do what I'm asked. So are you ready for this? Some beautiful images. So this is a picture of the Aberdeen Valley. So this was at the top of the hill where I live. And when you look across, you can see all the mountains and all the scenery. It is absolutely beautiful. That is basically where I live. You, know, you can't ask for better than that, can you? And this is the Brecon Beacons and Penavan. Look at that. That is literally about 10, 15 miles up the road from where I am now, something like that. And uh, it is breathtaking. These are images from up the top of Penavan. They're not my images. Uh, these are from the top of Penavan. Somebody who climbed the mountain um, over the last week or two, and I've acquired photographs. But isn't that just breathtaking? Pictures of South Wales. And then back to the minor tracks. I did get um, a short video, um, but for some reason I cannot get it to play, um, so it's obviously gone corrupt. So that's basically where I'm at. Um, loads of videos coming out over the next week. So I want to thank everybody for the support, um, whether you're in the UK or from overseas. I appreciate everybody's support. Um, I would appreciate it if you would uh, share the videos as much as you can to help me get out there. And just hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.